that's the key too, right? Is like life is guaranteed pain. But when I'm listening to my intuition, when I'm in congruent, when I'm aligned with myself, my reaction to life is different. Damn, let's talk some shit. It's Polly Siegel and Victoria Aaron, two licensed therapists who've spent way too much money on degrees, certifications and trainings. Mm. We both love what we do and couldn't imagine working in any other profession, but we're forced to be serious all the time and that gets boring. Shit Talking Shrinks discusses important mental health topics, the human experience and society at large while poking fun along the way. It won't be all fun and games because after every episode, you'll walk away with tangible tools to navigate life more effectively. We love a tangible tool. What up, girl? What up, motherfucker? How you doing? How you chilling? Oh, I'm I'm the opposite of chill right now. I'm distressed, shorty. I like how Alan is just walking in the background. Yeah, this is really professional podcast. There's just strange, <laughs> tall white men in the background just doing it. Just walking for the YouTube, which we'll get a bunch of comments on YouTube. Like, who's that guy? Who's mine? Oh my god, season two, Polly. Season two, we haven't done an episode just you and I in a hot minute. And so it kind of, it feels good. We're back, baby. Oh, this feels so good. It feels like I'm coming. (laughs) But I'm not, you know. (laughs) (laughs) And so when we were, we were thinking about like, what, what topic do we really feel passionate about lately? And one that, that we both have been living and breathing ourselves and intuition and gut feelings seems like the right topic for today. It's like our intuition told us to do intuition. Like our gut both told us we need to expand on intuition because it's something that's so individualized, but also so powerful for every human. And I think we should get into it. Let's get into it, baby. Let's get into it. Okay. So first, I think we have to really define like what is intuition? And intuition has historically been known as a hunch. It's like something within you that feels like it's trying to speak to you, that's guiding you, that's evaluating a particular decision or a situation or something that's your, that you're interfacing with. And it's like this, this physiological response that happens in your body that alerts you to go, wait a second, pause to really assess what's going on. Sounds like exactly what I experience. Something that I have ignored for many years, though. Big ignorer of intuition. Well, well, that's that's the common experience is that we, especially as women, we've overlooked our intuition or we're very quick to dismiss it and ignore it and justify it. And then our brain hijacks the situation and we don't actually listen to our physiological response. I feel like you would know better than I, but like when I think about where does, where does our intuition as women come from? Like I think of caveman era. Is that correct? Like we had to be, have that sixth sense of like, can I take my baby outside this motherfucking cave right now? Is that okay? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, right? Like, isn't that part of like, is there a fucking predator? Well, I think both, both genders and you know, non-binary, all the genders, we all have this power to go, hmm, something's trying to speak to me and guide me. But here's, here's, this is my personal take. I think women have a heightened intuition, stronger than men. And I have no way to back that up. That's just anecdotally what I've experienced. (laughs) This is why I think it's from caveman era. Women had to protect the family. You know, obviously they they weren't providers in the same way back in caveman days, but they had to make sure that they were protecting the children and protecting the family unit. And so I think a stronger intuition in this superpower emerged where like women just have a really, really keen sense of, of 
of detecting danger or harm or something risky. And I think we've had to do that because we are a more vulnerable gender. We've had to be on high alert and to be assessing our surroundings and our safety because we have been more at risk historically. And so we have this magical superpower that sadly we don't listen to most of the time. You know, what's so interesting. I was thinking about like female friends that I know that have like, or female acquaintances, because nobody I'm friends with is like this. That's why I'm not friends with them. It's like, they have no awareness whatsoever. And I want to fucking hit them in the face. I, I think if we were to go deeper in that, why do you feel like they're aloof or not really in tune with their intuition? I think because they ask stupid fucking questions or they ask like it in stupid fucking ways. <laughs> and I'm just like, what are you doing? You know, it's like, it's like, um, have you ever met somebody who's super, super book smart, like genius level book smart, but has no street smarts whatsoever, no intuition, no ability to like read the fucking room. And it's like, well, those people piss me off. Maybe whatever has been in their life for so long, like they're just so shut down from their intuition. It doesn't even matter. Well, I, anecdotally, just with clients, but also with, you know, our girlfriends, I feel like women ignore their intuition because their brain hijacks the moment and comes up with a bunch of rationalization and justification as to why they should or shouldn't do something. When really their intuition is saying like, hmm, this is not safe. Or their intuition is saying green light, go for it. This is safe. Right, good, yummy, whatever, sub in, whatever word it is. And I think because as women, we have been we've sort of turned into these over analytical creatures because we have to manage so much and we do so much and we have so much on our plate, you know, whether that's working full time and managing the household and managing kids and every responsibility. It's like, we don't have the opportunity to drop into our body to feel intuition or to feel our gut because we always have to be assessing and planning. It's such, I mean, it's such an amazing picture in my head of like just imagining a woman with like, or a person with all these responsibilities, all these different tasks, all these different, you know, things and with urgency that they have to do. And like for a moment to just like sit in your body and be like, what am I feeling? Like, a lot of us now I have compassion because maybe like a lot of us just don't feel it because we haven't really had the opportunity to. And I feel like you just changed my mind. Hey, I love an open mind moment. I love a tangible tool and an open mind moment. <laughs> I had to rely on my intuition as a little girl um, because in that position, I was always trying to get my needs met and I had to get really crafty on how to do that. And so I feel like from a young age, I was able to listen to my intuition because it guided me on how to be adaptive and get my needs met. And so I'm sort of the anomaly where I have always had a really strong connection to my gut. Um, but I have so much empathy that, that a lot of us aren't. And I think, you know, where I see... I think dating is a really interesting, <laughs> I guess <laughs> what I'm trying to say is like dating is a perfect example where women are going out with, I don't care who they're going out with, but they're interacting with different suitors and their intuition is speaking to them and their, their intuition or their gut feeling is saying, this is safe. This is right. This is meeting my needs, or this is not safe. This isn't right. This isn't meeting my needs. But how often do we continue with a suitor, even though our guts told us like, no way run. Mm. Like it happens all the time. Of course. You know, it's interesting, obviously that you bring up dating. Um, because I think about, like, I think about my intuition when I was in my past relationship. And the reason I couldn't access it, I believe this is my own experience, is that I was in survival mode. And so, like, I could not even, I could not, I could not be in my body. I could not regulate. I was just constantly in fight or flight. 
or frozen. You know, my, I was just vacillating between the two. And as soon as my cortisol level drops and I like actually was not so stressed and distressed, I started to like feel things and know things, but it was so foreign to me. Right. That like, I was like, oh shit. Oh shit. My body's reacting to this person. I'm, I'm feeling things I haven't felt in a long time. And so now I have even more compassion for those dumb bitches who don't listen to their intuition. Cause I was one shout out me <laughs> big dumb bitch. Well, you've evolved and you've advanced and now you're like listening to your intuition more than ever. Now I'm like psychic as fuck shorty. I want to take a quick pause to talk about our sponsor, a company called BetterHelp. It's an online therapy platform where all the therapists are licensed and accredited professionals. It's affordable. You pay a low flat fee for therapy with your therapist, and it's convenient. Do it at your own time and at your own pace, and you can communicate with your therapist as much as you want and whenever you feel is needed. And more importantly, it's effective. Thousands of people have benefited from therapy using BetterHelp. And we're really grateful to offer all of our listeners 10% off your first month. So if you're interested in receiving therapy ASAP, click the link in our show notes and you can get started and you get to save money. What is your intuition? You know the feeling. It's a knowing or a gentle nudge that something's off or awesome or it needs our attention. It's typically this subtle sensation that is trying to alert or guide us. Um, Researchers at Leed University concluded that intuition is a very real psychological process where the brain uses past experiences and cues from the self and your environment to make a decision. The decision happens so quickly that it doesn't register on a conscious level. So intuition is the way that our subconscious mind communicates with the conscious mind. And the information in our brains that give us that feeling or that like inner knowing is very real. But the way the information comes together happens outside our conscious awareness, which is why it can be really hard to trust or listen to. We all have this intuition and each of us have like this capacity to tap into our intuition, which helps us reach our truest potential. It's up to us whether we choose to listen to it or not. Ooh, definition from a university I have no idea about. Do you feel like there's more there? Like, I wonder if maybe we speak to more applications, like dating we spoke to, but also decision-making around career. Like when you're in the job search process and you're interviewing and you're interacting with different teams, a lot of times I feel that there's this intuition of like, oh, I don't know if this team or this position or role is going to be right for me. But then- the brain hijacks. The more I get aligned with my intuition, the more I'm starting to see it is magical, right? Like it doesn't feel as much of a process of like, like a scientific process as it does like something that's almost otherworldly. So mindfulness is a really good way that I have come to know and befriend my intuition and, and my spirituality also. So I think the more aligned I've become with that, the louder it's gotten and the clearer the message is coming through. And the more I know I can trust it because when I make decisions aligned with it, my life gets better. My reaction to life gets better. That's the, that's the key too, right? It's like life is guaranteed pain, but when I'm listening to my intuition, when I'm in congruent, when I'm aligned with myself, my reaction to life is different. People probably already know this, but Victoria has like a magical power to sense when we're like on the verge of dropping into the tangible tools. And that is one of the tangible tools of deepening your connection with your intuition. So if anyone's listening and they're like, okay, I know I ignore my intuition. I overlook it. I dismiss it all the time. How do I start to regain connection to that gut feeling or that subconscious communication? Here are the tangible tools to do that. Yeah. Give me them now. 
first one is what you said, meditation, dropping into a meditative state and looking inward with curiosity and exploration and trying to really sense without judgment, what is my body communicating with me? What, what is it alerting me to? Like really just like a curious alien. <laughs> mm, we love the baby alien. <laughs> we love the babes, ales, ales, lands. Ugh. Oh, I hated that. <laughs> Like the abbreviations have a place, but this was not that. And I just like my intuition, that's better than babe's ales, you know? (laughs) Okay. Getting, getting back on track, like meditative states that really bring us more clarity when we look in. And I want to, I want to, I want to read this piece. (laughs) So when we're getting an alert, when our body, when we, when we get that sensation and that hunch appears, whether it's finding a new job or you're dating or you're making a big decision of moving to a new state, like we're constantly getting hunches as we interact with the world is it's allowing yourself to be the observer, right? Where you're looking at a distance with openness to what's happening internally. And it's like, you're training your brain to just be clued in, but not necessarily with judgment or, or assessment. It's just noticing. Okay. I feel tightness in my chest. I feel a pit in my stomach. Um, my thoughts are taking me to this place and viewing that as, as information, as data that helps you determine a situation. So first tool is meditate when you get a hunch or a gut feeling. Second tool is check in with your body and do a body scan. (laughs) It's like every time you said hunch, I just kept imagining Igor from Young Frankenstein, like bending over and slumping over. Like, I have a hunch. I have a hunch, you know. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, yes. You know what? You're right. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Wow. Always fucking my flow. Okay. So a body scan is definitely also really powerful because what I've found in these moments where I'm like, oh, like my gut's telling me something. And then I stop and I like assess where I'm at, you know, I'm able to kind of pick apart like different reactions that I'm having. But that takes a really, I'm not trying to say like I'm experienced or, you know, I am experienced, but I'm not trying to say like I'm, I'm an expert at this ship, like to notice, like, is this a fight or flight response? Is this, is this my intuition? Like, it's hard to pick apart and you definitely need somebody like a motherfucking therapist or a friend who understands this thing or somebody who's aligned to help you. Like, that's the other piece of it too, right? That's the other tangible tool is check in with your people who know this and practice it and believe in it and utilize it. We don't have to do this work alone. Yeah. And I think when you have a, an intuition moment, like going to your closest people, your tribe and explaining it, like, I'm just feeling unsettled or I'm feeling uneasy about this decision or this experience I'm in. Like, what are your thoughts? So I think tangible tool Number three really is like use your tribe as a set as a fresh set of eyes on the situation. Wait, Polly, do you use your intuition with your clients? Like, are you like, I'm intuiting something? Oh, yeah. Okay. So for those of you that don't know, like Paulina's intuition is fucking fire. Like I could literally, I remember, I think like the first guy I dated I called you, maybe the second guy. The first guy was so great. Shout out Keith. Um, But the second guy I dated, I like called you and I was like telling you about him and you go, my intuition doesn't feel good. This feels yucky. And I was like, what the fuck? She's not happy for me. She's not, you know, (laughs) you were right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm giving you, I'm giving you a shout out. I'm telling you how talented you are. No, thank you. Thank you. Did you like that? You, I know you have a kink praise. <laughs> yeah, I did like that. And um, 
sometimes I wonder if I should have like a stand or a booth where someone tells me a situation they're in that's complicated. And then I like go into my intuition and I either tell them it feels safe or it doesn't feel safe. Oh my God. You have a podcast. (laughs) I should have call. We should have callers call in and I just like go drop in word. And I'm like, okay, this is feeling safe or hmm, I'm not feeling so good about the situation you're describing. So it's sounding like season three, people should email us at shit talking shrinks at gmail.com shit talking shrinks. Like those words are spelled at (laughs) gmail.com. So everybody season three, we're going to use Polly's intuition. You're going to get a gift because this shorty is gifted. You know what I'm saying? Well, thank you. Thank you. All right, back to tangible tools. <laughs> I think another tangible tool is, how do I say this? I guess allowing yourself to fully feel whatever's happening. We're very quick to try to move away or dismiss our intuition because we don't want to sit in it because it could be uncomfortable. And I think another tangible tool is like fully leaning into that sensation, that urge, that hunch, that yuck, like whatever is alerting you and just being like, I'm going to feel this and open up to it and expand in it because it's going to teach me something and it's trying to tell me something. Basically what we're asking people to do every single podcast is get really uncomfortable. Because like to ask somebody who's constantly going or constantly not going to pause and actually get aligned with themselves is really pretty brutal. Well, and honestly, the only way to grow and transform is by sitting in the discomfort. (laughs) So yeah, sit in your shit. Okay. So recap our tangible tools for our incredible listeners. You want me to? You're testing my fucking memory. Okay. So the first is meditation, you know, sit, get in your brain. No. (laughs) Get into your body. (laughs) Become an observer of your fucking mind. Okay. Paulina, Jesus Christ. I'm trying. I'm I'm giving it my best shot. So you want to become an observer of your mind. That's the meditation. The second is do a body scan. A bod scans and uh, get into your body. Recognize where are you feeling things? How are you feeling things? What do they look like? What do they seem like? You know, all of those things, right? And the third is you just said it. Pause. To feel your feels because you got to feel to heal. Oh my God. You just took us to church, temple. Oh God, I don't want to go down that road. Okay. Yes. Yes. Get into your feels. Did I do a good job? You missed the one that you gave though. What did I say? Talk to your tribe, like share with your people when you don't feel good and and have a fresh set of eyes on the situation. Yeah. But make sure your tribe is healthy, bitch, because most of y'all be hanging out with some really questionable motherfuckers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sign off V. What's your sign off? Listen, I just want to tell you guys, we big, 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 big love you. And we're so glad we're here for season two. We are. Okay. Catch you later. Catch you later.